Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into part 10 of our tutorial on the overhead panel. The A320 has hundreds of different buttons and switches, and we'll be tackling each of them section by section. In today's tutorial, we'll be tackling the fire push buttons, audio switching, and circuit breakers panels. Starting with the engine fire push buttons, they are normally in a pushed in and guarded position. To activate them, the crew pushes the button, causing it to pop out. This action sends an immediate signal to the respective engine to stop the oral fire warning and arm the fire extinguisher squibs. Simultaneously, it closes several key valves, including the low pressure fuel valve, the hydraulic fire shutoff valve, the engine bleed valve, and the pack flow control valve. Additionally, this action cuts off the FADEC power supply and deactivates the integrated drive generator, ensuring the engine systems are isolated and ready for fire suppression. The red light on the engine fire push button turns on whenever a fire warning is activated for the corresponding engine, and this occurs regardless of whether the button is in or out. Once the crew pushes the button, the system is prepared for the next step, discharging the fire extinguisher bottles. Next to each engine fire push button, you'll find two agent push buttons labeled Agent 1 and Agent 2. Once the fire push button is activated, these buttons light up white, indicating that the extinguisher squibs are armed and ready. Pressing either button discharges the respective fire bottle into the engine. After a bottle has been discharged, the discharge light illuminates amber, confirming that the extinguisher has lost pressure and the bottle is empty. The fire detection and extinguishing system can also be tested from the flight deck using the engine 1 and 2 test push buttons. When pressed, a series of indications confirm the system's functionality. The master warning lights flash, a repetitive chime sounds, and the engine fire warning appears on the ECAM. On the overhead panel, the engine fire push button lights up red, the squib lights illuminate white, and the discharge lights show amber. Simultaneously, the pedestal's fire lights also illuminate red, giving the crew a comprehensive confirmation of the system's status. Moving to the APU fire push button, it operates similarly to the engine fire push buttons. Its default position is pushed in and guarded, but when the crew activates it by pushing it in and letting it pop out, the system performs several actions to secure the APU. The oral fire warning is silenced, the fire extinguisher squib is armed, and the low-pressure fuel valve and APU fuel pump are shut off. Additionally, the APU bleed valve and cross-bleed valve are closed, and the APU generator is deactivated. As with the engine fire push buttons, the red light on the APU fire push button activates automatically when a fire warning is triggered, regardless of the push button's position. Next to the APU fire push button, you'll find the APU agent push button. Once the fire push button is activated, this button lights up white, signaling that the fire bottle is armed. Pressing the button discharges the fire extinguisher into the APU. After the extinguisher is used, the discharge light turns amber, confirming the bottle is empty. The APU fire detection and extinguishing system also includes a test function. By pressing the APU test button, the crew can verify the system's operation. During the test, the master warning lights flash, a repetitive chime sounds, and the APU fire warning appears on the ECAM. On the overhead panel, the APU fire push button lights up red, the squib light illuminates white, and the discharge light shows amber, providing clear confirmation that the system is functioning as expected. However, Caution must be exercised when performing this test. If the APU fire test push button is held for more than three seconds, or if the batteries are less than 50% charged, the APU fire extinguisher can inadvertently discharge. The A320's audio switching system provides redundancy in case of a failure of either the captain's or first officer's audio control panel, or ACP. In normal operations, each pilot uses their designated ACP to communicate and manage radio functions. 
However, if ACP1 or ACP2 fails, the third ACP can take over, ensuring uninterrupted communication. When the third ACP is engaged for either the captain or the first officer, it redirects control to the third panel, but this comes with a trade-off. The third occupant, such as a jump seat crew member, loses access to the acoustic equipment. To indicate this change, the ECAM memo display shows the message Audio 3 transferred in green. Switching is achieved by setting the selector to either Captain 3 or FO3. When set to Captain 3, the captain uses their acoustic equipment through the third ACP, while the same applies to the first officer when set to FO3. This design ensures that the pilots retain full functionality of their communication systems, even in the event of a primary ACP failure. The final parts of this panel are the pedestal light, which illuminates the center pedestal, and the front toilet occupancy light, which illuminates in blue when the toilet door lock is engaged. Next, we'll look at the overhead circuit breaker panel. The circuit breakers located on the overhead aft panel are typically not accessed during flight operations. However, they are crucial for systems powered in the emergency electrical configuration, ensuring essential systems remain operational during significant electrical failures. There are two types of circuit breakers on the A320. Monitored circuit breakers are identified by their green collars. If a monitored circuit breaker trips and remains out for more than one minute, the aircraft triggers a CB tripped warning on the ECAM. These monitored circuit breakers are actively overseen by the flight warning computers, FWCs, which provide the crew with precise information about the fault. Non-monitored circuit breakers are black and are not actively monitored by the FWCs. Special red collar circuit breakers are associated with wingtip brakes and are designed to prevent crew intervention. These breakers cannot be pulled manually. When a circuit breaker trips, the ECAM directs the crew to its exact location, referencing specific panels such as the overhead panel, the left or right electrical bays, or the rear panels. If the crew decides to clear a CB tripped caution on the ECAM, they have two options. One, press the clear push button, which temporarily removes the message, keeping the system active for further alerts. Two, use the emergency cancel push button, which silences the caution. But with an important caveat, if another circuit breaker trips on the same panel, no additional warning will be triggered. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.